be here from your past. Here's a gift, trying to get it right, the right angle on it. Okay, so in this video, as in the next few videos, we want to talk about how our belief system is created. Okay, so for many of you, you know, we come into the world and we come a clean slate. We don't have any thoughts, we don't have any ideas about anything. And we start to learn, you know, if we don't have any guidance from any adult, we learn from experience. You know, not to touch this because it's going to be hot, or not to touch that because it's going to be sharp and I'm going to cut myself and it's going to hurt. You know, I need water because I'm thirsty. I need to eat because I'm hungry. All of these things are instinct. And what we would learn from the world would be just from experience. How things make us feel. If it hurts, oh, we probably don't want to do that too many times because we're not really here to suffer. And that's why the body kind of breaks down when we do spend a lot of time suffering. We're meant to be in joy. That's our natural state, to be in joy, to be in love. You know, to be in that state of peace. So, you know, I think one of the things that gave me the most clarity when I was writing my book, Your Past is a Gift, was understanding that many of the the more I'm going through my life now the more I see it you know many patterns that I have are beliefs that were passed down that were thrown into my head either by my parents or by the church because you know from very little my mum would take us to Catholic Church and we'd have all these beliefs poured in you know about what God was about what you know about Jesus about the commandments about what we should do shouldn't do how we should be shouldn't be all these rules you know that went on and the thing is if you hear it once ah you can brush it off you know that maybe that's not important you know but the problem is that through your childhood you'll have these things repeated and repeated and repeated <laughs> and repeated so they kind of get stuck in there you know so for many of us this whole idea of heaven and hell you know that we don't want to go to hell when we die we want to go to heaven all these things were things that were repeated many 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 times throughout our childhood and so they become ingrained beliefs that this is what's going to happen to us you know if we don't abide by the rules you know if we're not good all the time and we don't follow what we're supposed to do so for me I guess I was lucky because in my home I had my mum that was a very devout Catholic we had to go to church every Sunday you know my sister and I with my mum every Sunday we had to go and we had to you know do the whole hour of mass every Sunday but my dad is an atheist he grew up in the Catholic religion, but somewhere along the line, he lost faith in what they were teaching in the church and turned into a complete atheist. You know, that there, there can't possibly be a God because of everything, you know, that, that goes on in the world. To him, he can't understand how there can be a God and children can be suffering, you know. Anyway, so look, I understand where he's coming from and why he believes that, that there can't be a God. My husband's the same, he's a complete atheist. There is no God because there's no one that can prove that there is. So to him, you know, he's of a, of a very logical mind. If he, if you can't prove that there's a God to him, then there is no God. That's, it's that simple to him, you know? And he grew up in a home where neither of the parents believed in God. So um, I think he was exposed a little bit to religions through school because we all were a little bit. So he got to see what other you know, kids were learning through religion, but he's an atheist, same as my dad. So at home, I had the two complete opposite you know, ideas of what God is or that there is no God. And what I loved the most about my mum and dad is that when mum was talking to, you know, to us, to my sister and I about God and whatever her beliefs were about God, my dad never said a thing. He never once stepped in and said, oh, that's garbage or, you know, never once. He respected that that was what she believed in. And 
And the same with Dad. Whenever he spoke to us that there's no God and he would give us all the reasons why there couldn't possibly be a God, my mum never once stepped in because she respected that that's what he believed in. And to me, that is true love. You know, to just accept the other person exactly as they are and not feel that you need to impose your beliefs on someone or you need to, you know, like she knew that his beliefs came from a lot of pain in his childhood. She could see that child because they met quite young. And so they knew each other's story and she just respected that. I, okay, I get it. You don't believe in it. You don't have to, you know. But for us, we were fortunate because we grew up with two completely opposite beliefs in my home. And for me, it made it all right. You know, that I didn't have to follow one or the other. I could make up my own mind what to believe in. When it came to God, that was one topic, you know. But as you're growing up, there's many, many things that are drummed into us. You know, they're just repeated and repeated either through school you know, that you just have to, you know, follow the line, follow the rules, all this, you know, at school especially, you know, just following what you're being told to do. Because, of course, they have to have a system, otherwise it would be all over the place, you know, with a whole classroom of children. But, um, you know, from quite young, we're taught that we have to fit in and just listen and just follow and just do what we're told from quite young. We're not taught to be creative and outside, you know, draw outside the lines, be outside the box. There's very few of us that are pushed to do that. So I want you to think about that today. All the beliefs that you have, where did they come from? Why do you believe them? Are they real? Are they true? You know, and in the next video, we'll talk more about the ones you believe about yourself because they're the most important ones you in your life, what you think of who you are, who are you inside, who are you is the most important one, and what you believe, okay, I love you guys, remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages, and I'll see you in the next video, bye for now.